Hi, I'm Steph Hines and welcome to our very first episode of Weekly Q&A with Steph. I'm going to be answering all of your questions and helping you solve problems every single Friday from here on in. I'm really excited about this, so let's get cracking with our very first question. CameronP.com asked, any ideas on how to bridge the young kids' knowledge gap between uni and the real world? What an awesome question, Cam, and something that I'm really, really passionate about. So I want to answer this in two completely separate parts because I think there's things that we need to do as an industry from a long-term perspective, but I also think there are things that we can do today. And um, I'll talk through some of the things that we've done with our wonderful 19-year-old Daniel in our office here. But let me go with long-term. So I hate the universities who generally are the ones who are doing the commerce degree style stuff. And I really don't understand why a commerce degree or someone who wants to be an accountant doesn't do exactly the same as what an apprentice painter or you know any of the trades do in that they're doing work experience as they're actually going through the university degree at the same time. Because there is nothing more beneficial than actually getting out into the real world and understanding what's important um, what you need to know, and also what you like to do. So imagine going through four years of your life doing a commerce degree and starting your job as an accountant and finding out that you absolutely hate what it is that you do. So as the number one thing, I think it would be great if we can have some influence on the universities that are around and really make sure that commerce, especially for accountants, is more like an apprenticeship, like a traineeship, than what it is now. So I was really lucky, and most of the guys here at GrowthWise have been really lucky at the same time, that we all worked full-time and went to uni at night. And that's the real benefit of living in Newcastle. So the uni here is great in that it offers everything that you need to do, lectures from five till seven, tutes from seven till nine. So that's the first thing that I want to say. But in terms of really bridging that young kid's knowledge gap, it's all about the training that you have to offer. And the thing that I found that works really well is training from the beginning, so the ground up. If you're having someone who you want to be a small business accountant, so you want to understand what's going on in the small business world, how things operate, um, the issues and problems that small business owners have, you have to let them walk in the shoes of that small business owner. So one of the best things we've done here at GrowthWise is Daniel, who's our 19 year old just turned trainee, second year at uni this year, he is literally in charge of GrowthWise accounts. So he does everything from paying all of our bills, paying all of the payroll, dealing with all of the issues of if somebody's off sick and all of those other bits and pieces, controlling our cash flow. But the really super duper important thing is he actually then has to present to me every single month what's going on with growth wise so he can turn around and say okay you're doing really well you're hitting your budget targets or you're doing this well or that well but here you're doing really poorly and come up with ideas on how we get to improve so I've certainly found that is a brilliant thing um, for a young person to do when they come into the real world of accounting if you want them to do small business accounting in the long run in terms of bridging the knowledge gap, because I know even from a technical perspective, the kids aren't coming out with the technical expertise that they need to be able to jump straight in and do that job. It all comes down to your training package and your training platform. And we've got to understand that young kids most of the time haven't had experience in big business. You know, they may have worked at Macca's or they may have worked at Subway or something along those lines, but this is not their first job and it's their first professional real world job at the same time. So it's really important that you have a very detailed training plan for them and that they understand what it is they're supposed to do. So we bridge our training plans into two completely separate things. So understanding the skills to be a people person, to have a conversation and to understand human behaviours as well as that technical knowledge. And unless you have those two things, you're either going to come out with great technical people who can't have a conversation with someone or you're going to come out with people who can have a conversation but have no technical skills. And that's why those two things melded together is really important. The other thing is I suggest giving young kids, we're talking about, you know, 25 year olds and under here, access to clients. Because 
if you're just pigeonholing them to do a certain thing, it's going to be really difficult for them to understand the big picture. So take your 19 or 20 year old or 18 year old into your next appointment and get them to really understand what it's like from the client's perspective versus the just sit behind a desk perspective as well and keep them being able to do that. So you may not want to assign them your actual business to run through and do all the bookkeeping, cash flow and presenting for, you may choose to do that from a client. So pick one of your exciting clients. So there you go, Cam. That is my suggestion for bridging the young kids' knowledge gap. Let's get into that industry and really make this more of a traineeship and let's maybe share some of our training plans that we've got. Michael MC Carter asked, what are your tips for attracting young people people as candidates to your firm? rather than human calculators? What an awesome question, MC. Tips for attracting people people, and especially young people people, rather than the human calculator. I absolutely love that phrase. This is something I'm really passionate about because I believe an accountant's job is to be able to tell a client a story of how they're going and what they need to do to improve. And if you've got human calculators, as you've said, MC, there's no chance in the world that you're actually going to be able to put that person in front of a client and have them succeed. My number one tip for this is your business or your firm has to have a personality. If you do not have a personality as your firm, you can just forget about attracting young people people because they're not going to want to come and work for you. So the first and only thing you need to do is get your firm a personality. Get it out there. Get it on display. Make sure everyone knows who you are and what you're doing. Now, for most of us, I know a few people are recruiting from, you know, all over Australia for, for you know, a remote workforce. But for most of us, we still have people in our actual offices. So it's really easy for us to get our personalities out there because all we need to do is get them into the actual community. But you need to decide what your personality is. So if your business, if what you're trying to create is a really outward there, um, young, dynamic, different thinking style of business, then that's the personality that you need to have as your business, not just as you. If you don't have that, if you're a really structured, tax-focused um, firm who wants to be dealing with, you know, all these really difficult tax style stuff, you're going to have a very different personality than someone who's trying to attract the startup tech world or someone who's trying to attract the retirees as an example. So when your business has this personality, it has to have that personality to attract the type of clients that you want. And in turn, it's super simple to attract the ideal person or the ideal candidate as opposed to a human calculator. So attracting them and having a personality is easy, but you have to back that up with what happens internally. If you just throw one of these young people out and say, you know, go over there and do bank wrecks or something ridiculous for the first 12 months of their life, there is no chance in hell they're going to be continuing to work for you. So having a non-human calculator and having a people person means you need to have everything internally as well as externally to be able to have that person engaged in what it is that they're doing. So you need to make sure that there's a path for them to have um, access to throw out ideas, to tell you their frustrations frustrations to tell you what they think you should do because one of the great things about young people is they do have some tremendous ideas because they haven't been in the industry for so long that this is how it's been done therefore this is what we need to do so my number one tip for attracting a young people person as opposed to a human calculator, make sure your business has a personality. Get it out there to absolutely everyone that you possibly can. Make sure everyone in your community understands what your business is about, who it is that you would like to attract as an employee, but most importantly, make sure your internal systems also portray the exact same thing. So that's it for our very first episode of Weekly Q&A with Steph. I'd love to hear from you. So tell me what barriers you have to growth. Tell me how you want to become more efficient or questions you've got around how to become more efficient. Tell me about your people related issues because I'd love to be able to answer those questions. If I can't answer them, I'll make sure that I've got one of our peers or someone else who I know is rocking that space really well and we'll get together and answer those for you. So. 
To ask questions, all you need to do on Twitter is hashtag StephQA, we'll put that somewhere around here, or shoot me an email, asksteph at growthwise.com.au. And don't forget to press the subscribe button on YouTube so you don't miss an episode every Friday from here on in. Bye.